stories from the Hadith about helping people, stories about how people can live together in a community despite being or in spite of being and from different races and backgrounds. And looking back, those were very important sessions of discussion that I had with her. As well as defenders of their faith, the constitutional monarchs of the country carry the responsibility of looking out for all communities. Well, let's have a look. Here we have the federal constitution. Here's the text, and this is important to say out in full. This is Article 153. It shall be the responsibility of the young Diputan Agung to safeguard the special position of the Malays and natives of any of the states of Sabah and Sarawak and the legitimate interests of other communities in accordance with the provisions of this article. Tuanku Abdul Halim once again steps into the role of protecting the growing diversity that remains at the heart of Malaysia today. Inside the throne room of Malaysia's National Palace, the historic installation of Tuanku Abdul Halim as Yang Dipertuan Agong, or King of the Federation, for the second time, reaches a very important moment. Ampun Tuanku, Patik Mohon Limpah Perkenan, Seri Paduka Baginda Tuanku, bagi Patik untuk menyembahkan keris kerajaan. Ampun Tuanku. Exactly as he did in his first installation as king four decades ago, His Majesty raises the perennial symbol signifying the constitutional monarch's role as protector of Malay customs. The Chris of state that is in the royal regalia is made from melted Chris's from all the states and it's reforged. This is a very symbolic weapon which symbolizes unification of the states in the defense of culture. Each state developed with its own adat, and it is that which is being protected by, by the rulers. Now that His Majesty steps into the federal role again, Trunku Abdul Halim's responsibilities as Sultan in his home state are performed by the Qadar Regency Council, comprising his brothers and his daughter, recently appointed the first female ever to carry the royal title Tunku Panglima Besar. I think about 200 years ago, Tunku Panglima Besar would be in charge of the land defences of uh, Kedah, which would mean working with the Sultan to ensure the safety and security of the state. And uh, that role, I think, will be seen as uh, sort of head of the armed forces. personally a commissioned officer in the Malaysian army and I serve as the commander of the regiment 513 which is our territorial army. Pada tahun ini negeri Kedah telah berjaya mendapat tempat ketiga. Saya amat berbangga dengan kejayaan ini. I am also the only female and the first female commander of a regiment. My title was bestowed by Tonku Agong, uh, His Majesty, after I became commander of the regiment. I feel it is a recognition of the involvement that I have with the armed forces. In a um, modern context, I see my role as not only involved with my traditional title of being involved in the army or in the military, but also as a motivator for young people to be involved in the defence of not just Kedah, but defending the country as a whole. So I find that to be a really rewarding role because most of these volunteer soldiers are from a cross-section of community and a cross-section of uh, occupations.
Though traditional roles continue to evolve with the times, a royal presence remains a pervasive part of the country's development. Where the lives and livelihoods of their subjects are concerned, it is never far from the eyes and ears of the rulers. In keeping with the royal responsibility she was born with, Tunku Putri inspects a new dam project strategically set up to control water levels. How much Bandang land did it affect? 45,000. 45,000 people were affected. So the dredging that happened widened the river by how much? The, the river original is about 50 to 80 meter wide only. Mm. Now it's, uh, Three times? Yeah. Huh? learned my responsibility and the roles that I now play are really through osmosis, through the leadership that my parents have shown and how concerned they are for what is really going on at the grassroots level and how they really care for the community in which they belong. Following the traditional installation ceremony, this evening, heads of government representing all Malaysia states return to the National Palace in Kuala Lumpur for a royal banquet to celebrate the first time in history a brother ruler has come back to the throne as Yang Dibatuan Agong, King of the Federation. The sultans who form the country's conference of rulers represent long lines of royal identity and tradition from absolute monarchies, right through foreign occupations and colonialism. Into the modern constitutional structures of Malaysia today. Even back at the time of Medeka, there were commentators from around the world, you know, political and legal commentators internationally who said, you know, it's amazing that this institution has survived. It speaks to the power of the symbolism of the monarch. I think one analogy would be, you know, it's the backbone you know, of the nation. You can't see it, it's inside, but take it away and uh, you're in trouble. Today, many traditional royal customs and roles have evolved with interesting transitions into modern Malaysia. Its constitutional monarchs have found gracing all kinds of functions from book launches, to fashion shows, to sporting events, to cultural festivals. I mean, the rulers are at these events all the time. You know, in terms of their interests outside their careers, these hobbies and interests, it excites people. People want to know what are the passions of our ruler? And that brings a lot of character to civil society. As well as their personalities, it is the institution itself which is celebrated in Malaysia. The Yang Dipatuan Agong's birthday is gazetted a public holiday, even though it is not His Majesty's real birthday. Their roles evolve with the times, but the rulers remain protectors of ancient Malay customs that have been retained for centuries. Sini, Selalu yang selalu yang kerap bunyi tang tam 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 ni roh ni balik tangan bila sampai di sini ya ada bunyi ni ah macam tu okey sebab nubat ni dia lagu dia memang khas macam tu je bila bila pun dia tak akan berubah dia tak akan tambah macam mana kita dapat dari mula macam tu sampai akhir As it has always, the unique music of the Nobat has guided the movement of the ruler to the throne. My father has been at the Conference of Rulers since 1958. He brings with it a tremendous amount of wisdom 
and experience. And that runs through all the decisions that he makes. He is immensely reliable. And that is his great strength. Beta merafakkan rasa syukur dan tahmid kepada Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Justru dikurniakan kesihatan dan usia. Sekali lagi memegang jawatan sebagai Seri Peluka Baginda yang dibutuhkan agung. Tuanku Abdul Halim's remarkable journey from one of the earliest surviving Malay Sultanate to the throne of a diverse democratic nation and back again, four decades and eight rulers later, reveals Malaysia's real majesty. Pengalaman ini telah menyedarkan beta akan betapa betulnya negara ini dan rakyatnya yang sentiasa dilimpahi rahmat, kejayaan, walaupun dunia keliling dilanda pelbagai kemelut politik dan ekonomi. Daulat tuanku! Daulat tuanku! Daulat tuanku! Daulat tuanku! Daulat tuanku! Daulat tuanku! Daulat, tuanku. Daulat, tuanku.